Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. This is the vehicle which is on offer for the Summer Quest for the naval side of things, and it is the Haruna. It is for the Japanese, it's rank 5, bus rating 6.7, and it's kind of similar to the Congo, at least in a few ways, um, with a few slight differences. The vehicle itself has some pretty large main guns, four dual mounts of 360 millimeters, two on the front that you can see here, and also two on the back uh, with a hydroplane in the middle, which is quite nice to see. It also has eight uh, 150 millimeters as well in single mounts. You can see them in the blisters down here on either side of the machine. Then six dual mounted five inch guns uh, in little areas such as here on each side in the center of the vehicle. It then also has a ridiculous amount of AA guns. You are looking at 24 25 millimeter singles, 30 triple mounted 25s, and then uh, the, you have two dual mounted 25s on top of that. If you have a look at the structure here, you can see them all in the x-ray. A lot of them are actually mounted on the turrets, uh, which are pretty cool. So they actually turn with the turrets. You can see some right here uh, and many in the center as well on these little areas. They really did try to beef this thing up so it wouldn't get killed by an aircraft. And guess what? It got killed by an aircraft. Uh, so <laughs> this battleship uh, unfortunately had the similar fate to a lot of the Japanese naval forces in the Second World War. And uh, because of that, uh, even with overwhelming firepower, didn't really help. The armor is the big difference on this thing compared to some others. It only has 229 on the ammo uh, elevators, and then on the front of the guns, you're looking at 254, which is the same as the sides. It doesn't right now have any uh, armor on the superstructure. Instead, it just has it around the bridge, 254 once again. And then it has this plate of 203 millimeters, uh, the belts that you can see here, and then above that, 152, and below, 76. So the armor on this is nowhere near as good as a lot of the other battleships that you see in the game around these BRs. So it has the firepower of them, it has the extra AAs, but it just don't, won't have the survivability because it'll get penned pretty easy by most of the rounds that come in. You can see the ammo uh, areas are actually quite small on this machine, apart from the front. So definitely aim for this area and just watch the thing go pop. You'll be able to destroy this whole area. Uh, quite easily. The engines also aren't that big uh, in the center as well powering this thing and they do have fuel tanks around them so the fuel tanks might get in the way to stop the rounds coming in. The guns themselves uh, they have a fire rate of two rounds per minute so 30 seconds as a reload time and also have pretty good vertical guidance. The targeting speed is slow as all hell but it is a battleship so this should be kind of seen as uh, something that's going to happen. Uh, the modifications wise, it actually starts off with standard SAP, which is pretty nice. Uh, so instead of HE, uh, it does get a bit of pen uh, behind it straight away. Then it gets an APC-BC round, which doubles the penetration from the standard SAP, uh, but does lose quite a lot of TNT equivalent alongside it. Then you have the standard HE shell, which pens 67, but has uh, 30 kilos of TNT equivalent. You unlock that at rank 2. You've also got a 152mm SAP shell that you can unlock at rank 1. Starts off with a standard HE, and the SAP itself is uh, quite nice, but still doesn't pen a lot, so it's probably not going to be too useful. Has all the standard stuff that you find uh, from a battleship. Nothing really new here. This thing is going to have ridiculously high mod costs, though, uh, which is going to be a problem. 11,000 on these, uh, then uh, 16, 14, and then 23,000, so... Not as high as it could be, but still pretty up there uh, for a machine. Unfortunately, the camouflage, uh, the extra one it uh, has, isn't in right now, or at least isn't on the vehicle yet. Maybe it'll come at some point. It'll be really nice to see this thing. So one of the great things about this is obviously it's AA uh, capability. Uh, so as a second spawn vehicle, I can see this doing pretty well. As a first spawn vehicle, it's just going to get eaten by the nearest... Uh, by the nearest uh, battleship just because of its unfortunate uh, setup when it comes to its 
uh, armor. But you can see here the amount of firepower the 25s put out. I've never really liked the 25s from the Japanese. Uh, they never seem to really uh, kill anything. And you can see here, just even with the amount of firepower, it takes ages to be able to deck that PBY. But uh, at the same time, uh, against like little machines, if they ever get close, just the amount of fire will be similar to stuff like the Baltimore that we've seen in the past, uh, which will take stuff out. Now, the guns themselves, obviously, they take ages to rotate. They take ages to be able to set up. But uh, in the meantime, you can of course use the wonderful, uh, you can use the wonderful hydroplane to kind of keep yourself interested, uh, which is quite good. And as a barrage, they do look really good. Um, it, it has to be said, the guns do look fantastic when they fire on machines like this. Um, I'm in it's incredibly fun to use uh, stuff like the large battleships just firing but unfortunately you have to wait 30 seconds in order to fire again which is the downside uh, of stuff like this but against stuff like destroyers obviously it should just annihilate them pretty easily against stuff like light cruisers and heavy cruisers it should tear them apart as well but against battle cruisers and battleships might not be uh, might not be the exact uh, might not be the exact um, you know the exact easy thing that people want from it just because even though it has the firepower once it gets hit back it's going to get hit super hard this thing just because of its lack of uh, general uh, lack of general armor, but I think people enjoy it and also at the same time This is a way of being able to get to the higher echelon of the Japanese tech tree by just playing This event, you know, you don't have to grind through the tech tree. You don't have to do anything crazy You can just kind of play this and then you're kind of good uh, You're just finished with it and uh, you can obviously play it and uh, use your little scout plane uh, that it has. Uh, this thing does have the turret on the back. Doesn't have any forward firing guns, unfortunately, but does actually get access to four bombs, uh, which uh, isn't great because they're not going to do a ton of damage, but at least it's something uh, compared to before. So looking at, you know, this machine overall, I'm pretty happy to see it. Um, it's a machine that I thought would just be added to the tech tree. I didn't think it was going to be one which was going to be a event vehicle, but it's still a welcome surprise. And I hope that people are going to enjoy this one, uh, just like, you know, they enjoy stuff like the Congo, which is one of the more powerful ships in the game at the moment. And if, if people don't like this and prefer, you know, coastal stuff kind of like I do, then hopefully we see a change to that in the next uh, setup or in the next um, in the next uh, event. You can also see one of the issues that uh, Naval has right now. My audio is going haywire, so that's not me doing that. That's the game. Just want to let you know that that's the case. There's a weird, like, crisscross uh, when it comes to changing from this to this, and it's incredibly annoying that it happens, but say la vie. It's not really something, unfortunately, I can control. But... This will be completely satisfactory and it will give people a taste of battleships if they haven't already got them and maybe it will mean that they'll want to, you know, grind through them and have a bit of fun with them. If not, then, you know, at least you know what you're getting in for when it comes to these larger machines. I think I would prefer to have a mid-tier premium personally, but I also understand that people want to get to the high stuff pretty quickly and give it a go. And this is one of the opportunities to do so. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. I'd just like to thank Nicholas Richardson, Elove Goat, Pyman675, Winter Scientist, Merciless Reaper, Jerry Provolt, Mega Dino King, Orange Tail, Teddy, John Ryman, Universe A, Ambrosius McClellan, Daniel Stanton, Moxie, B. Young, Uncle Bean, Sem Arslan, Derek R., Bereen, Lafouche, and Samuel Slick for supporting the channel.